Our coffers were depleted at the Battle of Stirling. So we need to strengthen our economy once again before pushing south into lands held by the English. We need to construct a market and establish trade routes to the villages of friendly clans. Local legends speak of three sacred relics hidden south of Stirling. Acquiring these artifacts for Wallace's army will be a great boost to Scottish morale. Okay, so this level does introduce a few sort of um, uh, maybe less, these, these are new sort of mechanics that you don't really need to know when you get started, but uh, we'll continue playing the campaigns anyway, uh, but they're more of a, uh, a team game thing or maybe even a more advanced level. So capture three relics and garrison them in your monastery. So we'll look at what the, the relics are and we'll also talk about what they do. If you lose your initial monks, you can train more from your monastery when you reach the castle age. And we've got blue, which is us mounting a defense. And we'll capture all the relics in the region. The first relic is in our town, Scottish allies, yellow. So this is, a bit more like a team game, an ally. Uh, they've walled up and they're holding another relic. So we can go and grab that from them and that'll help support us with some, some in infantry or archers, we'll see. The English have a strong base across the river. So they're our enemy and they've got the third relic. So let's get into it. So the first Scottish I'm gonna do- has been rallied by recent victories against the English. The situation is starting to look up. Yeah. It will help the morale of our army Bonus. to collect Terrible. holy relics and place Bravo, them in our monastery. Yeah. One of the relics is close to your town. An ally has another relic, yeah. and the English have captured a third. Oh. All right, so I'm you just going to queue up villages. Relic by clicking a monk and right-clicking the relic. Monks have other abilities as well. They can heal your injured oh. soldiers yeah. or those of your allies. They can also attempt to convert enemy soldiers to join your army. All right, so let's just slow down a bit. Let's um, take these four villagers, right click the TC, drop off the wood and go to the sheep. Remember the sheep will decay on its own. So if I just press stop, you can see here that the sheep will lose food. So you wanna have a decent number of villagers on sheep. Six is a nice, a nice number. All right, let's deal with the relics here. So I can click a monk and I can right click on the relic. I've got a nice uh, visual mod here, which will make it much easier to see the relics. So I'll collect the relic. Good, you have a relic. Protect the relic in the monastery by right clicking the monastery. And you can garrison your relic into your monastery. Perfect, you now have one relic garrison. Relics garrisoned in your monastery will slowly add gold to your stockpile. So yeah, relics will add gold. You can see I've got no villages on gold, but I'm going up in gold. All right, let's let's uh, let's scout this. I'll set this one to number one. This one can be number two. I've also got an idle yeah. villager. Let's build a few more houses. Farms um, are a good source of food once you have exhausted forage, bushes and animals. Farms are built like buildings and must be periodically rebuilt. To gather food from a farm, click a villager, then right click a farm. Alright, so I've got a few farms up here. Send some bills too. And I've got a few viral villagers. It's nice to have allies on the map. Your ally, the yellow player, can help you fight the enemy. You can also trade with your allies. To trade, you will need to build a market. Alright. So, get these on sheep. And we'll keep scouting. And we'll also build a market. So I'm just going to build a market here. 
So market is a feudal age building, which is something that we may need to go up. We currently have two already, it's stable in the archery range. Alright, let's just keep building houses. We'll talk about locations for building houses a bit later, but for now we'll just keep building villages onto the wood line. Keep scouting. So our market is about to go up. You have a market. The market can create trade carts to generate extra gold. You can also exchange one resource for another at the market for a small fee. Click the market, then click sell food for gold. Okay, so we'll pause here for a bit. The market is a, a very useful building. Uh, does quite a few things uh, in team games yes you can trade uh, with trade cards so those trade cards do take a population space they will uh, travel to another market come back with some gold uh, so it is generating free gold but you don't really want to be building trade cards unless you're playing a team game and you've run out of uh, just natural resources of gold on the map what you'd much rather use the market for in a team game is it gives you shared shared vision. So it's a technology called cartography, which automatically applies and you can see your allies. It, you do need to be allied with them and they need to be allied, allied with you as well. So you can see, here's my teammate. He's got a small town. He's got quite a lot of stone walls and a scout cavalry as well. They did mention there's a relic somewhere in his base, so it's going to be somewhere in the dark zone down here, or maybe up here. So let's go back to our uh, game, and we'll send a scout over there. So I've got a few idle villagers, send him back on that, and we've got a fair fair decent amount of houses now. Okay, we'll stop the villages for the time being. Uh, but if this was a proper game, you definitely wouldn't want to. Did you know that there are three different modes for the mini-map in the lower right corner of the screen? You can show only military units, or only resources, and trade units by clicking the buttons just below and to the right of the mini-map. Okay, so what, what he's talking about there is, you can see our mini-map here. Uh, this top button here will turn the score on and off. The one below it uh, will allow us to cycle through uh, three modes. So here's just the standard mode. We can go to the military mode, which will change the score to what military units you have. Also, you can see the only uh, colours of our town is now just our military. So you can see here, this big blue blob here is our military. If we cycle to the next one, we've got economy and it tells us the market prices. It also tells us uh, what units we've got. We've got seven idle villages, so let's fix that up. We'll go to our idle villages and we may as well build some farms. You can have your units move to a spot once they are created by using gather point. To set a gather point for infantry, click your barracks, click set gather point, then click where on the map you want your infantry to gather. Okay, so we've still got one more idle, and we'll just build another farm. Alright, let's go back to the normal mode. Uh, it's probably the most useful. You can see our town is there and there's Yellow's town. So let's go back to our scout. Looks like there's some sheep. We'll send that back to our TC. You can also see that we are able to advance the castle age, so we may as well do that. A few other useful technologies is just check each of your buildings. And you can see what technologies you can access. So, most important one is double bit axe. It improves our wood choppers. So, we'll increase our wood 
chopping capacity. Technology tree to see what technologies and upgrades you can research. Click the technology tree button in the upper right corner of the screen to see the tree for your civilization. So these wood choppers will now. What that means? It means that they're while chopping wood, that they will receive the ten wood in a much quicker time. It doesn't actually increase their walking time; it's just their gather rate. So we'll also go to our mill and see what technology we got here. Horse collar. Uh, it's pretty useful. It does seem like a food bonus, but it's it's mainly a wood bonus because it means that our farms have more food. We don't actually collect the food quicker. It just means the food, the farms will last a little bit longer. They do, you can see here, it's about to run out. They start with a, with a bit of food. So I'll click this before they uh, run out. And that way, when they build a new farm, we're getting more food for the amount of wood that we're spending. And we'll also uh, have a look at the other aspect of the market. So the other aspect of the market is this uh, buying and selling price. So you don't really need to worry about this at the moment, but it just means that you can buy and sell resources for gold. Okay, so let's have a look here. We can see that scout has found that relic for us. So we'll go to our town, find one of our monks, and we'll collect that relic. I'm gonna to go to my monastery. I can shift right click the monastery, and you can see here, it's gonna to go to the relic first, number one, and then number two, we'll drop it off. All right. Castle Age is really, really useful. It opens up a whole lot of uh, options. So we can upgrade our wood chopping again. Usually the wood, the wood upgrades are very useful. You can also see that we're able to create knights, which are really strong, very strong units. So we'll click a few of them. They are quite, ex excuse me, they are quite expensive. Um, so I'll right click here and create five knights here. I'll send this scout across the map and I'll also send this one on auto scout. Okay, the monk does need a little bit of pathfinding. So I'll just shift. Alright, we're getting attacked here. Alright, you can see they've got. allies town. Go inside to see how his city is doing. Your allies gate will open automatically for you. Okay, so there's the gate opening. If you've come for the relic, you can find it on the hill to the northeast of our town. Okay, so that's let's look at this thing we just dealt with here. So our scout went in, got killed almost immediately. So we do need to upgrade our our units. There was a few knights, and it looked like they had uh, archers, but they were actually crossbowmen. So if we have a look at our archers here, fairly weak units. We can actually upgrade them in the archery range. The, the first row is the units you can create, and the bottom, like the next row, upgrades those units. So we'll go crossbowmen. It will add health, attack, and range. Speaking of attack and range, we'll go to our blacksmith, and a critical technology for archers and crossbowmen is the fletching, and then bodkin arrow. So fletching adds one attack and one range. That one extra range is really, really important. But for now, we'll just um, create a bit of a, an army. You can see that we're out of gold now. So if we want really strong units, we do need to go onto gold. So I'll select these. And we'll look for some gold. Maybe that's why we need to trade because there is not much gold on this map, but I'll build a mining camp over here and get some gold. So meanwhile, we'll bring our monk back. Pathfinding was not very strong, so I'll use shift 
and right click to direct it back to the monastery. So we got some knights. You can see that I've set my scout to auto scout. It will automatically uh, scout the map. It is fairly slow and it's fairly, fairly dumb. So if you want better scouting, I would be manually doing it. All right, these sheep, probably not gonna come back to my town. But let's... We should queue up some villagers. We should probably get wheelbarrow. And we do need bodkin arrow. So bodkin arrow, it's the second level. So it's more expensive. So in the meantime, Maybe we'll just upgrade a few of the other, other things. Alright, so it looks like we are in battle territory now. So those monks can pick up relics, but they can also heal your units. So if we just have a look here with this knight. You now have two relics, Garrison. Bring back one more and you will be victorious. All right, so you can see we've got two relics. We just need one more. So we may as well send these send these units in. Send the men at arms in first. Crossbows in behind. Monks in behind. And we'll attack these units. So they've left the gate open, which is quite nice. Oh. Have enough soldiers now to think about attacking the English and recovering the relic. All right, but just say your gate is locked. We'll destroy the gate and go collect the relic. And see, we've got quite a lot more gold coming in now. So I'll go to my town, click on my upgrades, Bodkin Arrow. Yeah, maybe get a few of these. If you're getting ready to attack the English, I can help you out. Here, take this food and wood. Maybe we'll just click on a few of these. At the start, you can just click on, on what you need, but as you get better and better, you do want to be more deliberate with what, what upgrades you are getting. Technology is important, but you don't want to just be clicking on every technology. But at the start, you can just, yeah, go for it. All right, so this gate is knocked down. So let's, ooh. So we'll send these all through. Knights are really good at just charging through. Try and get those villagers. All right, so let's let's keep exploring, and we'll look for that final relic. So it might be here we go, and let's get this monk. We'll right click the relic, shift right click here, and just guide at home. You'll notice in Age of Empires, pathfinding is a bit hit and miss. Sometimes it's very good and sometimes it needs a bit of assistance. So you'll just, you'll get used to those things. All right, let's send these back to build a new lumber camp and have another farm. Maybe we'll upgrade, get wood hand cart. All right. We'll look around for any... Uh, here we go, another villager. So 
So when you're starting out, knights are probably uh, your best unit. They're very strong, they're mobile, they're quick, they move around. So if you want to take a fight, you can take a fight, very strong, but if you're outnumbered, you can always run away. So it looks not too bad here. Five knights easily make short work of this army. Alright. Now we just need to wait for our monk to return and the level will be over. So, yeah, relics, they generate gold, so that's really useful. They're not, there's usually only five per map and they're not, they're not the main focus you want to do when you're first beginning. Uh, if you are playing against the computer and you don't put conquest as your setting, uh, relics can give you a, a victory by collecting all of the relics and garrisoning them in your monasteries. So that's something you just want to be aware of. Congratulations, you have captured all three relics. With the three relics locked away safely in Scottish churches, men murmur that we are blessed by the heavens. Our army now stands a chance as we prepare for the final clash with the English. Scotland now has archers and knights of her own with which to meet Longshanks. We march south to Falkirk, where we will join with the army of William Wallace and plan our combined attack upon the English castle. Okay, so let's just go back to the map and have a look. So the market and the monastery are two sort of more advanced buildings. Um, monks are really, really strong in this game, but very hard to use. So they're not very beginner friendly. Um, same with the market. A market is a good, a good building, particularly on a team game. It allows you to see what your teammates are doing. And if you're uh, getting into the late game and gold has run out on the map, you can see we still have plenty of gold. Um, so gold is not too rare on most maps, but some games do go on for a long time and you do run out of gold and trading, trading is very, very useful. So, but for now, we'll continue on to the next, next level and here we go.